I found out about what the U.S. government had planned for revising the methodology for computing GDP just this morning. I was reading this piece in the Financial Times. U.S. economy gets a Hollywood makeover. And the idea is to change the way they compute GDP. The result is going to be a much bigger GDP. Oh, what a coincidence. You see, that's what the government does, right? Whenever they don't like the results, they change the methodology for calculating those results. See, when it comes to inflation, the numbers were too high. They wanted them smaller. So they changed the way they calculated inflation, and the result is less inflation, according to the government. They're, they've been doing the same thing with GDP. This is not the first time they have changed the way they compute GDP with the goal of producing a larger number. And this is exactly what they've done. Now, it doesn't mean the economy is actually any bigger, but they can pretend it's bigger. Now, why does the government want to pretend the economy is bigger than it really is? Well, you know, it's just like any kid, you know, he'd like to pretend that he got an A, uh, even though his, you know, he, he's, he's getting a, a lower grade, right? It's good to pretend that you're doing better than you are. And that's what we're going to do. And why do we want to pretend we're doing better? Because then it will make the debt look smaller. If we can claim we have a bigger economy, then we can claim we can handle the debt. And maybe some of our creditors will be dumb enough to believe the hype. But let's look at what they're going to be changing in the uh, the uh, the uh, GDP. Well, most of the changes are going to come to the investment, business investment. Remember, G, uh, GDP is C uh, plus G plus I plus net uh, trade. And the I is business investment. Well, the government is now going to count things as investments that weren't counted before and that not any other country on the planet Earth counts. So we're going to be the only country in the world that's going to include this in our GDP calculations, which means that it makes the comparison between our GDP and somebody else's, you know, now it's an apples to orange comparison because we're counting stuff that they're not. So what is one of the things that we're going to count? R&D spending, research and development. So every time a company spends money on research and development, it's going to count as if they built a factory or something. But R&D spending is not an investment. And if you look at gap accounting, if a company spends money on research and development, it, it expenses it. It writes it off in the year it spends it. If you invest money on building a factory, you don't write that off. You depreciate it over time. But it's an investment. It, it doesn't. It do, you don't write it off in the current year, but you do on your expenditures. Now, some people say, well, research and, 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 and development is important, and it could increase the long-term profitability of a company. Sure, it might. And if the research and development is successful, it may very well lead to business investment. Maybe they research something, and now they, they discover something, they figure out something, and now they have to invest in plant and equipment to build what the research came up with, right? So you're still going to get it in there. Plus, when you're, most of the R&D is salaries. A lot of it is paying people. And, of course, that's already in the GDP because they spend that money, right? I mean, the people, that they, they write paychecks to the, the researchers. But the problem with trying to capitalize it or claim that it's an investment is because it's not, because a lot of the research and development is a waste, a lot of times uh, they end up with a dead end or maybe they develop a product that nobody wants or the research shows that they shouldn't do something. But one of the big items that's going to be captured in this is the research that's done by defense contractors in trying to figure out how to build better bombs. Now, why should that research be considered an investment? Is that going to make the economy any bigger because a bunch of military, a bunch of you know, aerospace companies are spending lots of money trying to figure out how to make better bombs? I mean, of course, what if, what if, they don't, what if the re results are that the bombs aren't even any better? But they spent it on research. Look, these are expenses. They're not investments. But the government wants to treat them as expenses. Of course, they're not going to treat them as expenses for tax purposes because then, pe then, then companies would not be able to do as much R&D. But they're going to treat them that way for GDP. But it's also going to make U.S. corporations look more profitable because now their profits aren't going to have to be reduced by their R&D spending. Of course, they will for tax purposes. So it's, 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 you know, they, it's another lie. Then it even gets worse when it comes to um, spending money to 
uh, produce a motion picture or a television show or to write a book or even a greeting card, uh, poetry, painting, uh, producing works of art. All of this now is going to be included as investing. So, it, you know, when they shoot a television show, that's going to count as an investment, just like building a factory. I mean, come on, are they crazy? Now, they're trying to claim that this is true because when you invest in a library of entertainment products like television, you can sell these products for years and years, and therefore it's an investment. And they're using Seinfeld as an example of investment that you know the money to produce Seinfeld should have been considered an investment because of all the money that they're able to earn uh, you know in syndication well you know for every Seinfeld there's probably a hundred shows that are canceled in the first season or never even get picked up they they, 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 they shoot a pilot and no one even no one even picks it up so how are these investments? It's a complete loss. Every time somebody shoots a, a, a movie, that's considered making an investment. I mean, look, when someone writes a book, when someone records a, a, a song, I mean, this is nonsense to say that when a band records a song, that that's an investment. They're not investing in anything. They're making music. That's not investment. Now, sure, they might be able to sell uh, that song, but what, what if the song stinks? What if nobody buys it? I mean, the whole thing is absurd to try to count this as an investment. Meanwhile, it's already in the GDP anyway. If a musician records an album, people buy it. It's spending. You spent money on the album. The musician earns the money. Now he spends it on, you know, on drugs and sports cars or whatever the musician is buying. It's still in the GDP. To say that we got to count it as an investment. Some guy that's writing poetry is making an investment. The article even said that it's greeting cards, that when someone writes a greeting card, that's an investment. Look, I'm making an investment right now. I am recording the Peter Schiff show. Gee, that's an investment. According to the government, I'm investing right now because I am creating content. I'm creating something that I can sell in the future. I can license. So therefore, the act of doing the Peter Schiff show should be counted as an investment in, uh, in GDP. Now, I don't know how they're going to figure it out. What kind of value are they going to assign uh, to something like this? When, what about when a guy writes a book? You know, he takes time off of work or he, in his spare time, he writes a book. Now the government says that's an investment. How much is the investment? What if nobody ever reads the book? I mean, the whole thing is nonsense, right? I mean, I could, I could write poetry all I want. Is it an investment? You know, they'd be lousy poems. I mean, how, how is anybody going to claim that my poetry uh, somehow amounts to an investment? But that's what the government wants to claim because they want to make the GDP look bigger. But let me go to some other changes. One of them is in pension accounting. I'm thinking, gee, why do they want to make this change? Well, I think this has to do with government spending because when the government spends money, Part of the government expenditures are the salaries that it pays, right, to all of its workers. And part of that salary is the pensions. Now, as of now, the way they calculate that in GDP, it's based on what the government actually pays you. Now, part of that compensation could be in a pension, and then they count the amount of the contribution. So if the government puts $1,000 you know, in a given year into a pension on behalf of the employee, even though the employee doesn't get the money, it still counts as that the government spent the money because they wrote the check for $1,000, right? So it's part of the GDP. Now what they're going to do is they're not going to base the spending on what they pay, but what they promise to pay. So in other words, if the government promises to pay $2,000 worth of pension benefits, but only funds $1,000, when they calculate GDP, they're going to count the, count the $2,000 promise, not the $100,000 actual payment. Well, what kind of nonsense is that? What if they promised me a million dollars? What if they promised me a trillion dollars? Who cares what they promise if they can't possibly meet the promise? Why should it be counted in GDP? In other words, the government can promise us whatever it wants, and our GDP can go through the moon based on a bunch of empty government promises. I mean, who came up with this harebrained idea that we should give credit for what government says they're going to do, even if they can't do it and they're not doing it. I mean, the whole thing is nonsense. Now, apparently there might be some federal 
uh, expenditures that are adjusted down based on this. But the vast majority of expenditures will be going up, which is exactly why they're doing it. The government is not going to calculate a particular GDP change that is going to make the GDP smaller. There's no vested interest for the government to do that. They want the government, the GDP to look big, bigger. So they're only going to be introducing changes where the net effect is to make the GDP larger than it otherwise would have been. Here's one of the other changes. Uh, they are going to start to include certain expenditures that you incur when you buy a house, and they're going to add that into the GDP figures. Now, what, is, what does that have to do with investment? You know, if I decide to buy a house, how is that business investment? I mean, what, I mean, you know, what, what does that have to do with it? But what they're going to do going forward is when you buy a house, to the extent that you need an attorney to help work on the closing, and of course, a lot of people have real estate attorneys and they pay legal bills uh, when they buy a house. Well, these legal bills are now going to be included as an investment and added extra into the GDP. Why? The fact that I have to pay an attorney? Why is, how is that an investment? How is the country uh, in better shape? How are we better able to produce more goods in the future? Because my legal bills went up in the here and now. And of course, it's not just legal bills. Apparently, all of the administrative costs associated with buying a house, including taxes that you may pay on the transactions or closing, all those costs are now going to be included in the investment. <laughs> Why? By what definition is that an investment? And then I read a little further, and the article said that, well, up until this point, the only part of the real estate transaction that was considered an investment for calculating GDP was the commission that you pay the realtor. Why? Why is paying a realtor a commission? Why is that an investment? I mean, how is that any different than, 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 uh, than, than anything else that you might buy from somebody, any other? How is it different than the commissions you pay when you buy a stock? I mean, you're, you're investing money when you pay a brokerage commission? How? I mean, or a realtor's commission? I mean, what if someone buys a house and there is no commission? What if they just buy it from a friend? That, that, that reduces the GDP? So you increase the GDP. So when brokers increase their commissions, that means the investment has gone up. But if they lower their commissions, which obviously would be a good thing, right, if commissions came down, what if you only played a 4% commission on a house instead of a 6%? That's supposed to detract from the GDP because now it's, um, it's not a big, as big an investment. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, this is going to pad the GDP with all the uh, real estate transactions. Imagine how much brokerage commissions added to our GDP. GDP uh, during the housing bubble. There's one more little change, and I don't know how many there are. This is just the changes that this particular journalist is focusing on. And by the way, my brother tried to contact this journalist, and he immediately belittled it by saying, well, you know, it doesn't really grow the GDP because some changes are negative, even though the whole article points out that it's going to add three percentage points to GDP. Or, you know, so it, of course it, it's a net increase, but they want to close their eyes to what should be obvious, that the government is just lying about this kind of stuff. But um, here is um, another change that's in this thing. And apparently this is going to be for the deflator, right? When they're trying to calculate inflation, the government is going to come up with a new way of measuring the cost of bank services and having a bank account. No doubt the goal there is to reduce the cost component of banking so that the inflation number will end up being lower. So the government is finding a way to make the GDP bigger by both throwing things into the GDP that don't belong there and by making the deflator smaller so that they can make the, the real number appear to be bigger. In fact, my brother sent me, and I get a lot of these from people in the mail, sent me uh, his uh, indication of inflation, his real world. Uh, he had a bottle of uh, aspirin. Uh, you know, it's the generic Rite Aid aspirin. 500 pill bottle and apparently they just ran out and the the sticker on the last bottle was 1399 
And the new bottle for the same number of pills of the exact same generic aspirin now costs eighteen twenty nine. And, of course, he's had it for a few years, but he's looking at the expiration dates on both so he can pretty much guess about how much time has you know, transpired between the $13.99 bottle and the $8.29 bottle. And according to my brother, it translates into a 10% increase in the price of those aspirins per year uh, over the time period. Now, I'm sure it's the exact same ingredients. Nothing has really changed in the aspirin. It's just another anecdotal evidence of a price increase of about 10% per year over the past three or four years, not the 1.5% increase that the government claims. And you know, I know there's all sorts of anecdotal evidence. You'll say, well, you, Peter, you can't, you can't just find one thing. It's not just one thing. It's almost everything. Find me something that isn't going up in price. <laughs> you know, find me things that are going up according to the CPI. I want to buy those things. You know, thing is just the things that you buy are going up much faster than the CPI. I don't, they don't actually sell CPI units. Uh, they actually sell real things and prices are going up. And now, of course, it's going to look like the economy is getting bigger, uh, even though it isn't. And this is just more fluff on top of fluff our GDP is one big lie. Who knows uh, what it really is, but it's a lot smaller than what the government claims, which means our debt to GDP numbers are already far bigger uh, than anybody cares to realize. And why that's important is because the real GDP gives you the ability to service your debt. But if you have a BS G GDP that's artificially inflated based on creative accounting, then it, it doesn't mean the economy is generating the income necessary to service all of that debt.